Hey math students, how you doing? We're going to talk about logarithms today. Logarithms and logarithmic functions. Um, so behind me, you'll see something that is not a logarithm, logarithmic function. Uh, this looks like it's, a, like it's an exponential function, doesn't it? In particular, it looks like it's y equals a to the x power, where a is some number that's greater than 1. <clears throat> now, if you remember, if a is less than 1, that is to say if a is between 0 and 1, it would look just like this, only it would be swooping up to the left instead of swooping up to the right. So uh, that's my graph of y equals a to the x. And one thing that I want to point out is, even though it looks flat over on this side, put a little arrow there, even though it looks flat over here, it's actually constantly increasing as it's going to the right, okay? It, there's never a point where it's completely constant. It's always increasing a little bit as it goes from left to right. And what that means is, this is a one-to-one -one function, and if it's a one-to-one -one function, that means we can take the inverse of it. All right, well, let's do that. Let's take, instead of y equals a to the x, let's graph a, sorry, x equals a to the y. We'll switch our, a, our uh, x's and y's. And so the first thing I think is, well, instead of going through the point 0, 1, it's going to go through the point uh, 1, 0. And another thing that I think is, well, instead of coming down here and hugging the uh, x-axis, it's going to have to come down here and hug the y-axis. So it's going to look like this. It's going to come up and then swoop out like that. All right, it should make, it should be a, uh, a reflection over the line y equals x, if I did it right. And I didn't do it exactly right, but it's close enough. So this is the graph of x equals a to the y. It is also the graph of y equals the log base a of x. These two things mean exactly the same thing. Okay? Uh, please know that. It's, it's essential. <clears throat> so, uh, so, like I said, a logarithmic function is the, uh, the inverse of an exponential function. But it's also helpful, helpful to think of a logarithm as actually an exponent. Okay? Not the inverse of an exponent, but an exponent. And this is what I mean. If you evaluate a logarithm, and you get, okay, so the log base a of, of x is y. That thing that you're finding is the exponent, okay? So the logarithm is the exponent. If I, uh, if I look up what is the log base uh, 2 of 5, and I find out that equals some number x, well, what that means is that's the exponent 2 to the x power equals 5, okay? All you have to do is just switch around your 2 and your x and your 5, just like we did right here, and you'll see that that's true. All right, so let's find out what we can about logarithms. So, that's kind of some residue there. All right, remember how we had... Uh, um, we had our uh, exponential identities. Well, let's come up with some logarithmic identities as well. Logarithmic identities. Okay. And uh, I guess the first one that I want to write is, uh, and I'm going I'm to put over here that x equals a to the y is just like saying y equals the log base a of x. I want to keep that in my mind because uh, I sometimes want to use the identity that uh, um, x equals a to the, so a to the y, right? And this is what y is. So it's going to be a to the log base a of x. Okay? So if I ever have the log base a to the log base a of x, that's simply just the same thing as x. All right? 
Um, and I believe I'm going to use that just right off the bat here. So remember the identity that says, uh, well, let me just do it this way. Let's say M times N. I have M times N and I want to uh, describe this differently. I'm going to describe M as A to the log base A of M. And I'm going to describe N as A to the log base A of N. And you may be thinking, why would he do that? Uh, just bear with me for a second. Now notice I have A to the one power times A to the other power. Well, my very first exponential identity tells me, oh, well, this just equals a to the log base a of m plus log base a of n power. I just add my exponents. Yeah, all right. So I have m times n equals a to the this power. Now I want to rewrite this as a logarithm, okay? So if I have something equals a to the something power, which is what I have here, that means this something, the exponent, so that log base a of m plus log base a of n equals the log base a of this. Uh, so it's going to be the log base a of mn. I think I did that right. Yeah, this equals the log base A of this. That is our first identity, okay? And it makes perfect sense. Remember, a logarithm is an exponent, right? So that means if I'm adding my exponents, it's just like multiplying, okay? So adding logarithms is just like multiplying the thing you're taking the log of. All right, good. And uh, so that means if I have um, the log base A of M plus the log base A of, uh, of, no, let's do it this way. Let's say I have the log base A of M over N plus the log base A of N. What would that be? Well, it would be the log base A of M over N times N. Well, M over N times N is just M. And if I subtract the log base A of N from both sides, I end up with my second identity, which says the log base A of M minus the log base A of N equals the log base A of M over N. Again, this is intuitively obvious that if you're going to add your logarithms and that's going to be uh, synonymous with multiplying, that if you subtract your logarithms, that'll be synonymous with dividing. Okay, cool. Let's do another one. Um, so this time, uh, I want to find out... Uh, so I'm going to use the identity, this, this identity right here, that says m equals a to the log base a of m, okay? And uh, so what that means is, let me take m to the n power. m to the n power. That's gonna be a to the log base a of m to the n power. And I know from my uh, exponent identities that a to a power to another power, I just end up multiplying the exponents. So this is going to be a to the n times the log base a of m. Okay? Now, I'm going to take this and this, and I'm going to rewrite this as a logarithm. I have this equals a to the this. That means my exponent here, n, times the log base a of m is going to equal the log base a of this thing, m to the n power. Hmm. 
Okay. So if I have the log base, base anything of a number to another power, I can just take that exponent and multiply that exponent times the log. And that is my third identity. Okay. So here's the first one. Here's the second one. And here's the third one. Like I said uh, about identities before, identities are fun facts that come in very, very handy. And it's good, once you prove them, it's good just to kind of know them because they, like I said, they come in very, very handy. Um, so let's think some more about uh, uh, logarithms uh, in, in relation to exponents. Remember how uh, anything to the zero power equals one? Well, that means the log base anything of one is going to equal zero. The log base three of one is zero. The log base 10 of one is, is zero. The log base a million of one is zero. Uh, also remember how a to the one equals itself. That means the log base a of itself is one. So the log base 10 of 10 is one. By the way, the way you write log base 10 is just log. Okay. If there's no number written there, it's assumed that there's a, a 10 written there. And this is what's known as a common logarithm. Uh, and uh, remember how a to the negative 1 equals 1 over a? Well, that just tells you that the log base anything of that thing to the negative 1, sorry, of 1 over that thing is negative 1. Okay? Almost all of the... Uh, uh, of the exponential identities have an equivalent logarithmic identity. Now there's one more that I want to show you. And that's this one's a little different. So let's say that I have a calculator and my calculator can do common logs, but it can't do any other kind of log. Okay, so log base 10. There's a little button there that says log. And if I do, if I do log of 10, it tells me 1. Okay, that makes sense. It's the log base 10 of 10. Uh, but let's say I want to find a different logarithm. Let's say I want to find the log base, uh, let's go back to the log base 2 of 5. How would I do that? 2 to some power equals 5. Now, what power is that? I don't know. It's some irrational number. Uh, since 2 to the 2 is 4, and since 2 to the 3 is 8, it's going to be some number between 2 and 3, but I don't know what number that is. All I can do is I can take common logarithms, log base 10. So let's think for a second. Let's think, um, what is, uh, what would the common log of 5 look like? Uh, let's see, that's going to be uh, hmm. well, let's say that the, let, okay, let's say that right here, I don't know what this number is, but I'm going to call it x. Alright? And what that means is 2 to the x power equals 5. Alright? So now I look at the common log of 5, and I can just as easily call this the common log of 2 to the x, right? Because 5 and 2 to the x are the same thing. And remember what I can do with that, uh, uh, with that exponent there? I can bring it on down front and call it x times the log of 2. Well, what does that mean? That means x equals the log of 5 divided by the log of 2. x equals log of 5 over log of 2. And what is x? Oh yeah, it's the log base 2 of 5. So the log base 2 of 5. Huh. So look what I did. I was looking for the log base 2 of 5. And what I did is I can make a ratio out of it, the common log of 5 over the common log of 2. Now, was there anything special about 2 and 5 and 10? No. You can just as easily make this exact same argument and say the log base A, or yeah, let's call it the log base A of M, is going to be the log base b of m divided by the log base b of a. 
and that is your fourth identity. So rather than have rather than having three fundamental logarithmic identities, I think we really ought to have four because this base changing identity is pretty darn important. Okay, uh, I think that's good enough for right now. I will see you at the next video. Bye bye.